Okay, I'm Captain Rob Donaldson from the 37th Attack Fighter Wing flying uh, F-117s. Based in Tonopah, Nevada, but we live in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Uh, what's the general impression about finally flying combat missions uh, compared to the training in the long wait you had here in Saudi Arabia? Well, it's, it's kind of a relief to finally get started on the whole thing. Uh, my, whole, my general impression about uh, the whole uh, start, of, start of it was um, I'm glad we got started, uh, but it was uh, a little bit of a shock to uh, to see all the uh, the AAA that they f they threw up uh, at us the very first night. I feel that the training I've had over the past 10 years of, of flying in the Air Force has uh, well prepared me for the first mission. Uh, the only thing was that you know I'd never been shot at before for real in, in training and everything, and that was probably the biggest uh, surprise. But other than that, the uh, the discipline and and um, tactics and procedures that we used in training are the exact same that we're using here in wartime. So uh, it, it was good that we had a, about six months to get prepared here in Saudi Arabia to, to learn the lay of the land and, and uh, to, to know the enemy. Um, that helped immensely rather than start from a, you know, a cold start uh, kind of thing. So uh, we used the time real wisely, five to six months that we had. Uh, we, we trained real hard. And it was, there's nothing different that we're doing now that, than we did different when we, when we pretty much first got here as far as uh, tactics and flying go. The only thing is that uh, they're, uh, they're mad and they're shooting. So, uh, and, you know, and the other thing is we're getting to uh, at least shoot back now too. So that's about the only difference. Yeah. Uh, what was your first combat mission like? Uh, I went the very first night, uh, 16th, 17th of uh, January, down to uh, Kuwait. I was the only guy that, uh, the only F-117 that was uh, fragged to go to uh, hit two, car two targets in uh, Kuwait. Um, <laughs> that was a, uh, it, again, it was just everything, the tanker, uh, take off out of here, uh, rendezvous with the tanker was just like we had done every night before. Uh, went up to uh, the border and, and dropped off with the, uh, from the tanker there. And uh, everybody else went to Baghdad or to northwest uh, uh, so, uh, Saudi Arabia there to H2, H3. And I went uh, southeast down to uh, Kuwait. Um, I remember getting a real dry mouth uh, crossing the border, and that's about the only uh, real, uh, I guess, a physical um, thing that I remember happening. Uh, I went down, and uh, just before I turned uh, south, uh, pretty much south, to make my first uh, target run there, I looked off on the right-hand side, and, and I saw what appeared to be flares. At least that was my first impression. And I went, oh, gosh, they're, they're shooting flares. And, uh, and, and then it, it took about a... Uh, a nanosecond later, and it was those aren't flares. That's uh, you know AAA, and they're shooting at me. Uh, and then it just opened up all around me, all over the place. Uh, I was down pretty low. I was trying to get below uh, a weather deck to uh, get my bombs off, and uh, the stuff was just going off all around me. And, and I guess the best description to use is uh, take the best Fourth of July fireworks show you've ever seen, multiply it by a thousand times, and that's about what it was like all around my cockpit. Uh, but again, like going back to the other thing is the training was, you know, the training that we've done over the past uh, 10 years and the past six months here uh, uh, kicked in and it was, um, you know, it was just press on as business as normal. Uh, I don't really remember ever being afraid at that time. It was just too much happening to, to think about it. Uh, I was engrossed in trying to find my target and, uh, and drop the bombs on it. And unfortunately, uh, I was weathered out. So uh, they got to shoot everything at me that night and I didn't get to shoot back at them. Uh, and we, we just don't indiscriminately let our bombs go. Uh, if we don't see the target, we just uh, uh, suck it up and come on home. So uh, I remember and coming back, uh, I had a long way to go to uh, find the tanker again, and uh, found, found him, and I uh, got my wingman on, and uh, we talked on the way back and asked, hey, did you hear from so-and-so, or did you hear uh, you know, this other guy check in? And, and we said no, and, and uh, so I thought we'd lost a couple airplanes the first night. And uh, it was a long trip home, believe me. Coming back here, when I landed, uh, the crew chiefs told me that, that everybody had uh, returned, that all the F-117s had come back. And I didn't believe them because I, I, just, I just couldn't believe that anybody would have survived through all that AAA. Uh, but sure enough, uh, after he told me about the third time and then other people nodded their heads and said, yeah, everybody made it back and went, gosh, that's, uh, that was more of a relief than anything. So that's pretty much what the first night was for me uh, in combat. After that, it's been uh, the first uh, well, missions, probably one or two through five or whatever. Uh, I went to Baghdad, 
and uh, they were shooting quite a bit, as much up there as they were down in Kuwait the first night. Um, and it depends upon where you are uh, in the attack wave there. If you're one of the first guys through, they don't see you, and they don't start shooting until the bombs go off. If you're one of the last guys through, and they keep on shooting, and you look out there and you can see everything going off, and you go, well, I've got to go through it, but, uh, and you do. Um, but since then, it, it's kind of slacked off uh, as far as the AAA goes. Um, sometimes they only shoot uh, after the bombs go off, and then they quit after about three or four minutes. And sometimes they don't shoot at all. Last night it was downtown Baghdad, and uh, hardly a shot fired. So uh, I don't know if they're running out or if they're conserving. I hope it's, uh, hope it's the first. Absolutely. I think the stealth technology, I wouldn't want to be in any other airplane uh, than this one right here. Uh, we proved uh, early on, uh, when, when the war had not started yet, uh, that the stealth technology uh, worked. And uh, we took a couple of missions up close to the border with Iraq, and there was no change in any of their activity uh, as far as them noticing that we were up there close to their border. So we knew early on that uh, uh, we could get through them, and we did the first night. So we're... Uh, uh, very confident in uh, the technology that Lockheed uh, put inside this airplane and uh, very comfortable with it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be in any other airplane in, this, in, in any other war than, than the F-117 right now. Yeah. Uh, any comments about the, how the maintenance folks are? They've been fantastic, and uh, I've, I've lost track of how many uh, missions I've flown so far, but uh, I have not ground aborted one at all. Uh, the airplanes have worked fine. I've gotten all my bombs off. Uh, I have no nothing but high praise for the uh, the maintenance guys. They're really out there busting their uh, busting their hump, and trying to make this airplane work. And it's uh, it's a pretty sophisticated piece of machinery. So they've got uh, you know they've got their work cut out for them. But uh, young kids out there doing a, a bang up job uh, keeping these airplanes in good shape. No, it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of settled down now into uh, we just go up there every night and, uh, and do our thing and, and, uh, and come back. And I think we've had a, uh, a monumental impact on this war. I think the, uh, the Air Force probably wishes they had about five more wings of F-117s. Um, we've, uh, we've been the only ones to go downtown Baghdad. Nobody else will, uh, will go. Uh, and they've asked us to, uh, we've hit everything from... Uh, buildings in downtown Baghdad, the bunkers, uh, chemical warfare bunkers, aircraft uh, bunkers, command posts, um, you name it, and, we, and we've, uh, we've hit it. And they've asked us to do a lot of cleanup work for uh, uh, aircraft that couldn't get through to other targets, uh, F-111s or F-15Es, things like that, that had a hard time getting through the defenses to uh, uh, hit other targets. They've uh, tasked us to, uh, to go clean up for them. So, uh, We've done just about everything uh, there is to hit almost all the targets that are available uh, to us uh, as far as a wide variety of them go. Um, and we just, uh, we're just trying to do our best to get this over with as quick as possible and uh, with a you know, minimum amount of loss of life on the, uh, on the coalition side. How do you feel about the other pilots as a group flying with them? What, what other pilots? The other pilots with your squadron. How do you feel about them? Oh, well... Oh, these are probably the, you know, the, the uh, most fantastic uh, set of guys I've ever flown with. Of course, combat always brings you a little bit closer uh, in a situation like this to, to your comrades and your fellow pilots and everything. But uh, it's a pretty stringent um, selection process to get into the unit. Everybody's handpicked, and it's a selectively manned unit. So uh, the guys are, are, you know, are great guys to start with, and, uh, and this thing has just brought everybody closer. And uh, you know, it's something that you'll never forget, and the people that you fly with in combat are, are you know, are, the names and the faces are are uh, are imprinted forever on you. Yeah. I think you'll make it to a ten-year class reunion. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about it already. You bet. Yeah, yeah. We uh, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's a very small unit. You know, uh, there's not there's only uh, well they only built 59 F117s and uh, um, it's uh, a very unique. Uh, airplane in a very unique uh, set of circumstances with, with, a, with a unique set of people. So, uh, yeah, we've already been talking about 10-year, uh, 15-year reunions and things like that. You bet. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.